Hi, I'm Simon Cherryman and I'm an ornithologist, which is a fancy way of saying a bird scientist. I'm here with Ethan and we're at my workstation in the hills just outside of Perth in Western Australia. And today we're going to make a nest box. You can follow along too at home with the help of a grown-up. Some species of wildlife, over 300 different types in Australia, are what we call hollow dependent species. So they actually can't build a nest or a place to sleep themselves and they rely on a hollow in a tree to be able to cater for their habitat requirements. A nest box is an artificial form of a tree hollow and we need them in areas where we've lost the big old growth trees. So this is some old form ply from the rubbish tip. It's about 18 millimetres thick and you can use any of this type of material as long as it's not softwood. When a tree starts growing in the landscape, it might take 50 to 100 years before the termites actually chew away the inside of a tree. So by putting a nest box on a tree that's young, we're essentially turning it into an older habitat tree. Before you start, you need to decide what size nest box you're gonna make. If you've got a big backyard, you might wanna build one that's suitable for owls, possums, ducks, or other birds. If you've got a smaller backyard or even just a balcony, you can make a smaller nest box that might be suitable for things like microbats or even insects and spiders. Ethan's going to be helping me under my supervision. If you're going to be doing this at home, it's really important that you get a grown-up to supervise you too. For this nest box, we're going to need five wooden panels. Four of them are going to be 500 millimetres long and 250 millimetres wide and we're going to need a smaller one for the base, which is 250 millimetres square. So I've used a hole saw to cut a nice round hole in the entrance so the animals can get in. And now we're going to fit this hollow log as a doorway. This is salvaged from an old firewood pile, but it's really important that natural hollows aren't taken from the bush because they might be already providing a home for an animal. You can just use a piece of hardwood and drill your own hole in the front. Some species in Australia are becoming dependent on nest boxes to keep their populations going. If they don't have these artificial hollows, they might become extinct. Here in Western Australia, we have three species of black cockatoo that occur nowhere else on the planet. And in some areas, those black cockatoos are relying on nest boxes because there are no old trees left. The next thing to do is to fit a type of mesh ladder to the inside so animals can get in and really importantly, get out. So Ethan, I'm just going to cut the sharp bits of wire off here so nothing pokes itself and gets injured. Great, that bit's done. So we're going to put this to one side now and assemble those and then we'll put this piece on last, OK? Nest boxes should never be used to justify cutting down big trees because even though these nest boxes work really well, you cannot replace the hollows that are in an old natural habitat tree. Once that tree's gone, it's going to be hundreds of years before another one like it will grow back. You can use a wooden lid, but we've reinforced this one with corrugated iron to stop birds from chewing the lid to pieces. If you choose to paint your nest box, it's really important to use water-based and not toxic paint. This is a box that I painted a couple of days ago and I chose to use a greenish colour that blends in with the natural environment. Well done, thanks for your help today. Did you have fun? Yep. High five, let's go. The last most important step before you put the nest box in a tree is to add some wood chips to the inside, like these. This allows the birds especially to be able to make a little egg scrape to lay their eggs in. The ideal height for a nest box is about four metres, so typically the larger tree hollows for larger hollow-dependent species are installed higher, usually more than 10 metres, and you might need to get a professional to do that. Some of the smaller boxes, especially ones suitable for microbats, can go only a metre or so off the ground. So this nest box I've prepared with some wire and I'm threading it through hose to protect the tree's bark. And this little loop here is going to be used to thread the wire through. It's best to place your nest box in at least partial shade and, if possible, face it away from prevailing weather conditions for added protection. And that's one more hollow home ready to be occupied. I hope you've enjoyed making this nest box with us today and don't forget to check out Australia's Wild Odyssey for more information about biodiversity right across Australia.